This video is very important, especially because of the current economic situations. Most of the companies are facing liquidity crunch. They are short of capital. They are short of investments. So if that is the situation, what to do? Hi, I'm the Commerce Specialist. Welcome to my channel where you'll find videos covering learning outcomes of various academic qualifications and professional certifications, including life changing business ideas and hacks. So in today's video, we are going to talk about capital rationing and how we use profitability index to arrive at a better decision. Assume that we are a company who regularly invests in profitable projects. So most of the time what happens that uh, there are projects which seems viable but we don't have enough money to invest in all of them. So if that is the situation what we have to do is we have to invest very rationally. That's where the word came capital rationing. So here I have an example where this company has four available projects. These projects are Alpha, Beta, Romeo and Charlie. This is the investment required. 10,000 for Alpha, $20,000 for this, 30 and 40,000 for Charlie. We are already given the present value of future cash flows. So if you invest in uh, Alpha, 10,000 in year zero, all the future cash flows, their present value would be 11,240. This will give you a present value of cash flows 20,000, 32 and 43. So NPV is already calculated uh, from present value of future cash flows. If you minus the initial investment, you will get NPV. 20,991 minus 20,000 will give you a positive NPV. Why? Because the present value of future cash flows are more and the initial investment required is less. Same here, 32,230 is the present value of future cash flows for Romeo and your initial investment is just 30. You end up making a positive NPV of 22,330. And for Charlie, the present value of future cash flows is 43,801 and the initial investment is 40. You end up making a positive net present value of 3801. So if we recall the decision criteria for NPV, we invest in the project as long as the project gives a positive NPV. I have created a video on investment appraisal techniques where I have discussed NPV in detail. So whenever you have time, you can watch this video to understand how NPV is calculated. However, here we are talking about if NPV is already calculated, our criteria is as long as the project gives positive NPV, we will invest. So if you look at this, all these projects are giving us positive NPVs, which means we are gonna invest in all of them. For a while, if we assume that there is no capital constraints, that means we can invest in all of them. And if we do, how much money do we need? 70, 80, 90, 100,000 is required. 100,000 is required to invest in all of them. But what if I give you a constraint that available funds are only 60,000 US dollars. If that is the case, we cannot invest in all of them. So normally what people do is they pick and choose and the criteria is obviously whichever project gives us the highest NPV we are going to invest in that project first. So here I've done ranking as per NPV. So this is the highest NPV. I would like to invest in this. So if I invest in Charlie project, which is my first priority, it gives me an NPV of 3801, but it requires an investment of 40,000. If I go on my second best option, uh, Project Romeo, it gives me an NPV of 2230, but it requires 30,000. Now 40 and 30 is 70. I have only 60,000 left. So what I'm going to do is, if I choose projects, if I choose my investment in project based on NPV, and I'm assuming that I can partly invest in a project. So I would start with Charlie. Okay, it requires an investment of 40,000. And this is my investment. And this will give me an NPV of 3,801. My second option is Romeo. Investment requires 30, but I have only 60. So I can only invest 20,000 here. That's how my total 60,000 is spent. 
If I invest 30,000 in this project, I'll get this NPV. But I'm not investing 30, I'm only investing 20,000. So I'm prorating it. So if, for example, I am investing 20,000, whereas the investment required is 30, so that makes two third, right? So I'm taking two third of this because I'm not investing full 30,000 here. I'm only investing 20,000. So I'll take two third of this amount. So two third of this will give me 1487. So that gives me a total NPV of how much? 5,288. But this decision has been taken if we have considered NPV as the criteria. So what I have done, I have only 60,000 to invest. I ranked my investment opportunities as per the highest NPV. So highest NPV is this, it requires 40,000, I took this, I got full NPV. And then the second highest is 2,230, it requires an investment of 30. I have only 60,000, 40,000 has already been invested. So only 20,000 can be invested in this project rather than 30. So if only 20,000 is invested, so I worked out a fraction, 20 about 30,000. Out of 30, I'm investing only 20. So that's two third of the amount. So it will entitle me for two third of the NPV, which is 1487. As a result, I've invested all the money I had, but my total NPV comes to 5,288. But ladies and gentlemen, this is not the right thing to do. What we have to do is we have to apply the concept of profitability index. When we are facing situation where we have less capital to invest and all the available projects seems very, very promising, we have to use profitability index. We have to rank our project as per profitability index rather than NPV and you will see what is the final outcome. So first of all, you need to understand what is profitability index. Profitability index is a measure which compares the present value of future cash flows of a project with its initial investment. So if I calculate a profitability index of my very first project, so if you look at the present value of future cash flows is 11,240 and its initial investment is 10,000. So if I divide 11,240 by 10,000, I'm just uh, showing it here, 11,240, divide by 10,000. So this will give me 1.12 if I take two decimal places. The profitability index is coming to 1.12. Similarly, if I do the same for the second project, beta, the present value of future cash flows is 20,991 divide by 20,000. So 20,991 divide by 20,000 will give me 1.05. Likewise for Romeo, 32,230 divided by 30,000, 1.07. And finally, 43,801 divided by 40,000, that gives me 1.10. So now, if I try to rank my projects based on profitability index, so the highest here is this one, second highest is this, third highest is this, fourth highest is this one. Now if you notice, when I chose NPV as the criteria, my ranking were different. When I'm choosing profitability index as my criteria, my rankings are different. Because here this was my first criteria, here this is my first criteria. So if I try to allocate allocate the existing funds of 60,000 and I invest according to this ranking, my very first choice is alpha. So I will take alpha, uh, which requires an investment of 30,000. This is the investment. So alpha requires an investment of 10,000 and it will give me an NPV of 1240 all right i have 60000 10000 is already invested what is my second best option second as per profitability index is charlie so then i'll go for charlie i still have money charlie requires 40000 
and I will get an NPV of 3801. So 50,000 is already invested. I have total 60,000. Remaining 10,000 is there. What is my third option? Third option is Romeo. Now if you see, now if you see Romeo requires 30,000 and I am only left with, I have already invested 50, I have 60,000, I will only invest 10,000. So total investment required is 30, but I am investing only 10,000 here. So that's how all my 60,000 is invested. But the NPV, which is 2,230, because I'm not investing 30, I'm only investing 10. So I have to take one third of this. So one third of 2,230 will give me 743. So when I add all this, this will give me a total NPV of 5784. So if you look at when we are using NPV as our ranking criteria, we are making a total NPV from investing 60,000 US dollars. We are making a total NPV of 5,288. But when we are using profitability index as our criteria for investment and investing 60,000, our total NPV comes to 5784. So that helps us to save 496 dollars. So I hope you guys have understood when you face a situation where you have limited funds to invest and all the available investment options seems very promising and lucrative you, what you have to do is you have to go for capital rationing but keep in mind that you use profitability index as a criteria another thing you need to understand that when we're talking about capital rationing there are two types of capital rationing one is known as soft capital rationing the other is known as hard capital rationing soft capital rationing means that the management of the company has decided that they're not going to invest more than x amount of money in the available projects so the constraint is very much internal but when we talk about a hard capital rationing, the company is facing a situation in which management wants to invest more, but they cannot get external funding. Maybe they cannot get a new bank loan, they cannot sell more shares, they cannot sell more debentures. So external capital rationing is a kind of difficult situation. So regardless whether it is internal or external capital constraints, we have to use profitability index as a criteria when we are faced with investing in multiple projects and we are short of funds. If you have any other questions relating to capital rationing or profitability index, please leave a comment in the comment section. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe, press the bell notification button so that you get my videos on a timely basis. If you like this video, please share it with your dear and near ones so that others can also benefit. Thank you so very much for your precious time. Love you all.